time and keeping the Sabbath. Mark Levy makes the point. Imagine there is a bank account that credits your account each morning with $86,400. It carries over no balance from day to day. Every evening, the bank deletes whatever part of the balance you fail to use during the day. What would you do? Draw out every cent? Of course. Each of us has such a bank. Its name is Time. Every morning, it credits you with 86,400 seconds. Every night, it writes off at a loss whatever of this you fail to invest into a good purpose. Is it any wonder that Jesus says, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. John 9 and verse 4. Accordingly, I make three points. Point number one, time is a gift from God. Unlike the gifts of talents and treasures, time is that which we hold in common. Talents are based on one's ability, according to Romans chapter 12, 6 to 9, and financial resources are as God apportions or permits. However, God has given to each person the same amount of time in a day, and you guessed it, 24 hours. Indeed, an impartial God. In the book, Working the Angles, The Shape of Pastoral Integrity, Eugene Peterson explains that the day doesn't start when we wake up. In fact, we enter the day sleeping, resting, unaware of what God is doing as He starts the day. We are given the opportunity to wake to a day already spoken into creation, and we did nothing to make it happen. Clearly, the reference to a day in Genesis 1 is a literal 24-hour period that constitutes a gift of time each day for the entire week. This remarkable gift of time from the Creator demands that we wisely apportion it for worship, work, family, self, rest, etc. Peter Drucker observes that time is the scarcest resource, and unless it is managed, nothing else can be managed. And so I ask the question, how can one carve out time for all of the above? Prioritizing is crucial. This brings me to my second point. And you ask, what is it? The need to prioritize. As already noted in John chapter 9 and verse 4, where Jesus declares, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. The sense of urgency is obvious here. Jerry Paxter, or Paxa, a former president of the North Pacific Union, captures this urgency by asserting that leaders must have an intentional ministry. That's from his book, The Road Ahead. With this statement, he deliberately promotes the importance of managing time to get the best and the most out of a day. In addition, Edgar Mills defines the concept of intentionality as purposely directing one's life as much as possible rather than allowing it to be determined by external pressures. Essentially, one must proactively take charge of his life and that which surrounds it as opposed to allowing circumstances or situations to control and to dictate one's life. Benjamin Franklin sums it up well when he said, If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. While in undergraduate school, I learned the art of planning my day the night before by creating an agenda. I listed in order of importance what I needed to get done. Inspired writer Ellen White states, It is wrong to waste our time. If every moment were valued and rightly employed, we should have time for everything that we need to do for ourselves or for the world. Isn't that remarkable? Time for everything that we need to do for ourselves or for the world. I come now to point number three. What is it? Privileged time. 
It is difficult to talk about time without considering the days of the week, as alluded to earlier. Moreover, it would be reckless to talk about days and time without considering the weekly gift of the Sabbath. Yes, the Sabbath. The words of Moses continue to echo, reminding people everywhere, six days, you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, according to Exodus chapter 20, verses 9 and 10. Therefore, he continues, remember the Sabbath day. Therefore, he continues, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This timely reminder each week is designed to create balance and perspective, enabling you and me to reconnect with our God, with self, family, and nature, and to conform to God's rhythm of time. The famous Jewish author Abraham Heschel calls the Sabbath a palace in time. Isn't that wonderful? Each seventh day, God's heavenly palace descends from heaven to earth, and the Lord invites us into the glory of His presence for this 24-hour period to spend quality time, a time of intimate fellowship with Him. The Sabbath points us to our Creator and Redeemer every week and invites us to worship Him. In conclusion, I reference an interesting analogy made by Stephen Covey that underscores the need to embrace the Sabbath or what I call privileged time. Says Covey, suppose you were to come across someone in the woods working feverishly to saw down a tree. What are you doing, you ask? Can't you see comes the impatient reply? I am sawing down this tree. You look exhausted, you exclaim. How long have you been at it? Over five hours comes the return, and I'm beat. This is hard work. Well, why don't you just take a break for a few minutes and sharpen the saw, you inquire. I am sure it would go a lot faster. But the answer comes, I don't have time to sharpen the saw. I am too busy, too busy sawing. Perhaps many people are stressed, disturbed, and troubled simply because they are too busy to spend quality time with God, too busy to pause and to embrace God's wonderful Sabbath, a pause in time designed to renew, to restore, and provide purpose and perspective. I need to sharpen my saw. This advice of Abraham Lincoln deserves the full attention of those living in a frenzy world. What did he say? If I had eight hours to chop down a tree, Abraham Lincoln said, I'd spend six hours sharpening my axe. In other words, spending time with God, honing your axe, is never time wasted. What a privilege that God has given us this period, this day, 24 hours. I ask you, my friend, how are you using the time that God has entrusted to you? Are you using it wisely? Remember what I said earlier? 86,400 seconds you've been given for this day. It is my prayer that you'll use it wisely to honor your God, to care for yourself, to care for your family, and certainly to touch the lives of others. Because when we touch lives, we are making a difference in our community. I thank God for this time. What about you? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for the gift of time. I thank you, O oh God, for the gift of your Sabbath and the joy that it brings, the rest and perspective, and it reconnects me with the one who has made me. O oh God, what a privilege, what a blessing. I don't have to guess who I am and whose I am because I am your son, I am your child. 
but I recognize that there is someone who is listening, oh God, who needs to be reminded that he or she is special, notwithstanding what he or she may have heard. And so I pray that in these final seconds, that person will respond to you and will use wisely the time that you have given just to read your word, to spend a few moments in prayer to you, or to reach out and to make a difference in the life of somebody else. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your love and for this gift of time that you've given to us. We pray in Jesus' name. Thank you.